It's time for the show that engages with people of the combat sports world. And now, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed combat sports show champion of the world, Flash Knockdown! So, so now we come on to Connor. So you faced Connor in May 2019, my guest on episode 7 and a 14-time British kickboxing champion, also from Liverpool, for his almighty amateur lightweight belts. You were due to meet at Cage Warriors only three months earlier. However, Connor had to pull out due to a staph infection on his leg, leaving you to face Adam Shelley. You know Connor very well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't really want to fight him, to be honest. Wow. If, if I'm honest, he's always disappointing me. Um, if I'm quite honest, bloody, I see me saying, they messaged me saying, Do you want to fight Connor? I said to Gav, Don't say yeah, but just say as Connor said, Yeah, okay, because I didn't really want to fight him. I seen him like a killer, no, like I used to speak to his uncle a lot, and you know, like David, yeah, David, yeah, you, even you though fought him twice, like, didn't you? Yeah, I fought David twice. He is, yeah, I was 16, he was bloody 20, or do again, boss experience. His uncle was a good fighter. Very, you would look at him and think he's a good fighter. He had his very own style. Yeah, he landed egg kicks and was flash as well, but he had his own style. It was it was lovely timing. You know what I mean? It was time, was crisp, and that's what he used to win on a lot. And that's what he beat me with, and that was another lesson I learned when I was a kid. I don't know how old David is. David must be like 35 or something like that. Maybe he'd going on to 40 of that. 40 when I was 16. And then a little bit later, maybe when I was like 17, 18. So I can remember them fights very clearly. Because he was a high level fighter, David. The first time I fought him, it was like, oh, that was going that was going up a level. You know what I mean? But yeah, anyway, where was I? Because I've just gone off the track again. I was like, no, I'm no, no. Just pull me back, you know. Just get a rope pad and pull me back. I swear to you, where was you? No, it's shit again because I'm just chatting shit again. So you said, <laughs> he said when, when the offer of, of Connor was Oh, yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm said, back where we are yet. So um, let me know, I said. I said, let me know if he's going to, like, if he wants to fight me. I said, cause I, like, I said, don't tell them I don't want to fight him, but I'm not really, it's not someone I want to fight. I still see them as just like a kid from the circuit who, like, I knew. It's not someone I really want to jump into a cage with and say, come out, let's have it. You know what I mean? I find it a bit mm -hmm. weird. Obviously, obviously I will. Which I did. But I found it a bit weird. So he let me down, like, in the fact of, like, he said, yeah, Connor, accept it. He's ready for it in that. And then he started chatting shit on social media. Started, like, proper, like, I'm not a big social media person, like, for, like, arguing people. But he started putting like a load of mad. I can't even think like some of the things he was saying, like just, just chatting absolute shit as people do. And he disappointed me, showed like a bit of a shitty side to himself. But I think personally, that was just because I was in his head already. I think he was just trying to big himself up and G himself up and get, get himself ready more than anything else. But it was the wrong way to go out because doing it at my expense really, really like being cool. My ass has someone else done it. Like if, if what's his name is doing it, what's his name? Teddy. 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 If what, Teddy was doing it. I don't know Teddy. Yeah. So that, that'd be cool. He's going about it cool anyway. He, he's saying, I want to fight you, Marcus. I want to take your belts. Cheeky chap. Cool. Whatever you know what I mean. But he was just, yeah, chatting and shit. And I just, I just lost quite a lot of respect for him. He apologised to me after, after the fight. But yeah, yeah um, it was a bit, a bit weird. Okay. Due to your familiarity and history, Connor regrets investing too much emotionally. He felt he may have affected his performance. Were you feeling any tension or pressure? No. 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 None at all. None at all. No. Wow. For me, I've seen him. I see him as a kid. He's not. He's not. I'm. I'm. I'm probably not much older. That old. Kind of. Do you know how old he is? Uh, I think he might be twenty. He's. Tw he's, tw he's twenty. I believe so. Is oh. he only? He's only twenty. I'm twenty. I'm twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. You are. So. So when I was seventeen. I was watching a 10 year old kid fighting yeah. on the tournaments. You know, I've seen yeah. him and, you know, I've seen him win as a kid. I've seen him yeah. get beat up by bigger fighters and he'll be upset. No reflection on him now. He was a kid. Exactly. Yeah. So the, no reflection upon him now. He's obviously he's a cage fighter. He's, I'm not saying he's a weak person. He's not. But I've seen all these moments 
So in my head, I've seen his journey, and I know he's a kid to me in my, in my mind, and I know his ability, and I know my ability, and I was just never worried. I was just never worried. I, always, I knew I was in his head. You know what I mean? Which I don't, I don't want to say, I'm in his head, I'm a fucking some mental master, but he put me in his head. You know what I mean? It's hard for me not to be in his head when he's been on the circuit that I've been on for so, so long. I've been fighting for as long as I have, winning as much as I had. And, you know, as a kid, he would have been sitting there watching me fight as a kid. You know what I mean? Just as I watched him earlier, he would have been watching me, sitting there, yeah. watching the adults. So I was never worried, really. Yeah. Do you ever get so, nervous? Like I say, I don't realise. You don't realise. don't realise. We spoke about this on the... On the it's not nerves. I'd, I wouldn't say nerves. My thing is pressure to perform. Yeah. That's, that's my sort of issue as I expect so, so much of myself. I still haven't put one for I haven't been in one fight yet where I've shown myself. There's so much more to come. I have not shown a glimpse of myself yet. I've shown glimpses, a little piece here and there. Not one fight I've had where it's been me. Right. And that's just due to the thinking about wrestling, thinking about Jesus, thinking about all this. But now I'm getting comfortable before that. I'm gonna let myself out of the box and just be creative again. Yeah. But sorry, where are we, bro? Catch up with me again because I'm losing us again. Go on. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. So it was a star studded affair with the likes yeah. of Darren Till, Mike Grundy, MVP, Molly McCann, all in attendance for AFC's first show in Liverpool. And you both had tremendous supports. Was that one of the best crowds you've competed in front of, Marcus? Due to what was on the line, yeah. yeah. Due to people being so invested in me and invested in Connor. You know, being in such close proximity, in you know, it's, the Olympia is not a ginormous place. You know what I mean. So you can get up close and personal in there. You know what I mean. So I thought it was a much bigger crowd that have been probably just as excited, but with the room, the atmosphere, the way the crowd reacted to every single move and shot, it was yeah, probably one of the best crowds. Yeah, good. Well, up there, it's a recent memory. Up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ray Thompson, owner of Almighty, and my guest on episode twelve said uh, AFC 12 was the best almighty crowd of all time. The best AFC crowd you've experienced. Let's go for AFC 12 at the Olympia. At the Olympia. We had some really, really crazy fights that night. Uh, you know, we talked about the title fight with Connor uh, and, and Marcus. The two ladies that fought and left everything out there. You know, even the main event with Luke Shanks and Conor Hignett was was a good fight. So yeah, let's go with with AFC twelve. That's a good that's a good choice there, Ray. So he certainly agrees with you. I, I, I can see why it was it was it was raw, wasn't it? It was it yeah, was really hard, like unbelievable. And then you had you had MVP who said that he specifically came to that show to watch you and Conor. Yeah, yeah, it was good to see Michael. To be honest, I've, I've known Michael for years since since I've been a little kid. Really? Um, again? Yeah, just from being wow. on the circuit. My dad knows his dad well. Um, I think Michael's dad may have even has he passed? Has he? I think I think he has. Yeah, he has. Um, my dad knew his dad. Um, I know his brother Curtis, not as well as I mean, not okay, Kay Kaylon. Sorry, that's his dad, Curtis Kaylon. Um, not as well as no Michael. He was sort of quieter, like when we was like sort of not in anymore. Tournaments, but Michael's up. Nah, nah, not anymore. He's, he's loud and brash, and he, but Michael's always been loud and brash, and he's one of the people again I used to watch. Like sitting there as a kid fighting our fights, he's like Robbie Hughes. Right. He used to sit there and stare and watch all the time. He's like someone to look up to. He's always come over. How are you? Okay, mates. So um, yeah, it's yep. been good to good to watch Michael. To be honest, and Michael is probably one of the little things that sort of push me more because I'd always wanted to do MMA and I see Michael do it, and he transitioned so well, very well. And as for us, you know what? Like it's just more evidence, isn't it? You know what I mean? It was sort of yep. I came in. Still amateur, but halfway through the cave, all the crazy people coming in. But it's yeah. still happening, isn't it? There's still a trend yeah. of crazy fighters appearing. Definitely. But sort of that was the beginning, of it. like Wonder Boy, Michael's like sort of showing a proper flash. Obviously, after the auto, obviously, you know the original sort of crazy yeah. man in there, but Machida. more our side points crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, makes sense. And given Connor is a high level striker, he was the one initiating the takedowns, sharing with me that it was part of their game plan. And in hindsight, he perhaps should have striked with you more. But the game plan was to take him down, take him down, beat him up. Then when he starts, you know, getting a bit, uh, getting a bit tired, then start, start striking with him and possibly finishing from there. Um, but I, I, another thing, I think I was too invested on that game plan. 
I was too involved in. I've got to take him down. I've got to take him down. Whereas I'm confident enough on the feet. Did you have a game plan? And if so, care to share what that was? I was just going to go in, control the range, strike them. That, that was all I was going to do. I thought uh, it was billed as a striker versus striker. And I had a, we had a feeling though, that he was going to do that. To be honest, I said to myself, he's seen Mark beat me. Yeah. And he went, there's a weakness we can exploit. But I went home, fixed that weakness, made it a strength. And the weakness was gone by the time the fight came. You probably should have watched a bit of the Adam Shelley fight and sort of realised. To be honest, I was even better by the time I came to Connor at doing it. Have you seen me sort of doing the cage pressure against Adam Shelley? If I watch it now, I cringe because I'm thinking, oh, how much space you're giving him at the hips. Your back isn't straight, you're not pushing into him. By the time I got to Connor, it's still not as good as it is now, but it was better. So it was too late to be using that tactic. Basically, if he would have fought me when Mark fought me and done it, maybe. But it was too late. Too and late. And that weakness was gone. Yep. And the third round would live in almighty folklore. It had just about everything, including knocking Connor down for the first time in his MMA career. Did you believe he wouldn't recover from those strikes? Um, I wasn't. I never particularly threw hard hands there. No, I never particularly threw. Like, if you watch it, just more me just throw my hands. He sort of, I hit him a break. I hit him yeah. to the left or right. And then he sort of fronts me as if to say, come on then, let's have it. Which didn't work out very well because I hit him with three more shots and he sort of wobbled to the cage. But at that time, I wasn't sort of thinking, let's take his head off. Let's, let's nail him. You know what I mean? But he'd done well to the cover. He'd done the yeah. odd clever thing and grabbed me. But he did. my issue is after it, to be honest. That's a big mistake. I watched, when I watch my videos, I'm always looking for mistakes. And if you watch after I drop them, I help them up. I lift them off the ground. Yeah. So as, he, as he's going to get up, he's got his arm in the air swimming. Lifting up on me, would need bollocks here. Lifts his head up. I go, come on, mate, get off the canvas instead of going, Rah! control them. Just little things that I learn, look back at and think, if I've done that now, wouldn't have survived that. Wouldn't have survived that. What was the reason moment. you did that? The reason I broke off or the reason I lifted them up? Yeah. Inexperience. Inexperience. I don't know. It, now, obviously, I'd have my wizard. I'd push my hand down towards his head, control the horse by the head. I would, that's what I would do now. Then it was just like, oh, grab him, grab him, lift him. I, I know I need to hold him somewhere, but I'm not too sure where, but that's just, it's more of a fan now. You know what I mean? That was one perfect lesson for me. When I watched the video back, I went, what was that? I've right. just helped him off the floor. But I digress. <laughs> now, who spotted that? You or, or your coaches? Me. Obviously, Gav, Gav, obviously, he comes back to me every other week saying, look, I've been watching your videos. So I watched all five of your videos, watched all six of them the other day and comes back and tells, you know, we need to do this, 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 this. I spotted that one. That one. You know what I mean? There's a few things. There's obviously, Gav spots the majority, but when I'm watching, as someone who teaches martial arts myself, I'm always looking for mistakes and what's wrong and what's right. And that was just one I spotted straight off and went, what the hell was that? You know what I mean? But Fair he done well to survive. On the actual question, he done well to survive. Very. Yeah, yeah. done really well to survive. At and were you happy with your um, endurance? Yeah, oh yeah, I felt fit. I, I felt I felt fit to be honest. Yeah, I felt really fit. Yeah. Um, last first seconds, last round, maybe that's that's where I just kept me in the cage because I sort of switched off. I said to myself, I was I was counting rounds. I was counting rounds. You shouldn't really do that. I, but I was. I, I went back to the corner. I went to I went to Gav. Round one, I went. Yeah, that's my round. Now. Um, come back was it. What rounds was it? I can't, I can't remember the exact order fucking now with that fucking long ago, but I come back and went, mine, mine, is mine, and counted them yeah, up like that. No. And I knew when we was in that last fate second, the body sort of went, oh, we're ready to go home now, bud. And that way, it was more the fact of, you won this fight, as opposed to, you've got nothing left. Gotcha. Like, that's just, you're just keeping me at fate seconds now, it's just fucking, let's go. He's not, he's not going to gotcha. try and escape anyway. No. So you were confident going into the last rounds that you'd won 100%, it? 100%, yeah. 100%. Yeah. There's a moment when we get up, if you watch the fight back, there's a moment when we get up and I stand up and I see him like on the on the floor, like on his knees. I said, oh, you finished. Yes, right, yeah? yes, yes. I, said, yes. I, I yes. seen that and I said to myself, you finished? Yeah. I, said, you, yeah, you I think that was at the end of round four. Me? Yeah. I think there's yeah. one moment where he's on top of me. Like when he ended up on top of me in that round. Round three. So we end, he ended up on top, didn't he? Yeah. And you see it with Adam Shelley. You see it with him. I'm winning. And there's no, I'm not under pressure to get up. I'm thinking like it's hit. I sort of I, I made that round which I won, but, but sorry, which I won the beginning of a more questionable round. 
because I said to myself, mm, you, you've got him here. Yeah. I'm used to counting points. I'm used to looking at a scoreboard and going, oh, it's 6 2. Oh, well, let's try a, let's try a cartwheel kick. It doesn't really matter. So I'm counting rounds and my head, which is something I need to get out to myself. But you see me like when I'm on my back and he's doing these strikes that he loves to bang on Instagram so much on the floor, which, you know, is after he's just been dropped. <sighs> I'm not really asked. I'm not really in a hurry to get up, to be honest, because I know I'm winning the rounds, I'm winning the fights, which is a bad thing to do, because he could have hit me, he could have caught me. Yeah. Bad thing to do, but it's the way I think. You see me with Adam Shelley, third round, I saw his going back, and I'm lying there, I'm going, and then you see me like third seconds, I get up. I just think, like, no, let's just get up now. Yeah. And I didn't see a point, but at the same time, tit should, should not do that experience, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think they should have the judges' scorecards on the screen? Like in between rounds, or not? Um, that's just that's a horrible one, that, isn't it? That's a horrible question, that. Um, I've never had that proposed to me whatsoever, you know. I don't think it'd be a bad thing, um, but you might get judges getting a nightmare. Yeah. That'd, that'd be the only thing I'd say is, you know, you're going to be getting judges getting a nightmare halfway through a yeah. fight. true. Um, besides that, I'd see no problem with it myself, maybe letting yeah. the corners know. Exactly. Maybe that, but at the same time, it's down to you and your corner at the same time. That's the way fighting's been, isn't it? It's up to you to make your mind up and you to leave no doubt in that judge's mind. But as we see sometimes, Canelo Triple G, you know, what's that woman's name? You know her name, don't you? The woman who believes scored the Canelo Triple G fight. Oh, yes. That's unbelievable. You get instances like that, you know what I mean? You're going you're gonna to get trouble. You know? So it'd be good to know halfway, but at the same time, yeah, you can get ridiculous scores, but <sighs> horrible on that. That's a horrible question. Yeah, it just brings it just brings a bit more accountability to the judges. But look, man, it's it's just a disgrace that you have people that really don't know anything about martial arts and mm -hmm. they're judging martial yeah. arts competitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got to think every round. Gotta, they've got yeah, they've, they've what actually, saying, exactly. They've they've actually got to score it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed <laughs> to going at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end, like yeah, 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 yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe just the coaches, that might be a good idea, though. Okay, interesting. So, it was a great contest with it winning Fight of the Knights and Ray describing it as one of the best AFC amateur title fights, which is a big statement indeed. Would you be interested in a rematch? No. No. <laughs> no. That was a unanimous no. I swear to God, lad, no. Wow. I have no interest in Connor Hughes in this light. He seems to have an interest in me thinking if he strikes better than that. All that happens if he strikes is he's going to go down. He's not got the striking capabilities to do that with me, I'm telling you now. That was the best night he was going to get with me ever, period. You know what I mean? Now I'm a better wrestler. I'll throw him. I've been watching his wrestling. He hasn't evolved. He's still getting held up against the cage and still not fighting back. I learned from when I got held up against the cage. Nice one, Mark. Mark Hewn. Appreciate it. He hasn't learned from when Marcus Lewis done it to him, though. But you see, in the next few fights, he gets against the cage. He stays there. He's not evolving. He's sitting on his shots. He's too comfortable. He's too cocky. You know what I mean? I have no interest in him whatsoever. Unless he goes and does some big things. You know what I mean? I have no interest. Teddy, yeah. Connor, be asked. Okay, well, after, after being in there for 15 minutes, it was nice to see the two of you embracing at the end. It's what, it's what martial arts is known for and perhaps, yep. the thing I, and perhaps the thing I love most about it. So well done to the both of you. That was, uh, that was classy. Yeah, you know, I may be giving Conor a bit of a hard time, yeah. That's, that's just because, like, we fought and I thought it was over. You know what I mean? I thought that was that and I wouldn't hear nothing about it again until maybe one day when he was ready to fight me again. But it's just instantly saying it's still, oh, you know, if I would have done this, then I would have won. You know, fucking I made Bentleys, I'd be a millionaire, but I'm just, I just fucking don't. You know what I mean? I'm not going to start doing it anytime soon. So just, I'd rather he's left it to bed, didn't mention me no more. And I can be cured from again. Like, I haven't spoke to David since that, you know, which is a shame. I used to message David all the time. Ended up having made at me gyms and all that because obviously people were upset. It ain't me. I didn't argue with him, but people were upset. So I'd rather than just leave it. Just not even, like, mention me no more. And we can be cool again. You know what I mean? But, like, we still, we are cool now. He apologised to me after the fight. He apologised to me in the middle of the cage, which I took him and cool, left it at that. But stop saying you're going to beat me and doing this, that, the other. You know what I mean? Just leave it there. Okay. Well, Marcus, you're now the champ champ of two major UK promotions. 
a difficult and rare achievements. How proud were you? You've seen me interview, you know. You know the answer <laughs> to this You've seen me all like, Of course. You know, I see interview often, yeah. Yeah. Just another step on the ladder. Just another step on the ladder. It's, it's, a, good, it's a nice nice thing, but it's just another step on the ladder still. I appreciate them both. Good organisation. Not many organisations I could say, like, that's another one I want. Maybe, maybe UKFC, Teddy. UKFC, but yeah. Besides that, no, there's not, I don't know all the amateur organisations, so I could be undercutting some people here. There is, there is a few bigger ones as well, or c- comparable ones, but obviously a name like Cage Warriors so it speaks for itself, and Almighty's oh, got quite a quite good reputation within itself, so I'm quite happy to be representing both of them as a champion. Excellent, brilliant. 